Hey, this is Michael Brandt with GarageBound LLC in Chattanooga. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're talking more about laser welding. So we have had this machine for a week or so and we were doing something wrong. So today was a perfect day on Black Friday to come in here. The phone's not gonna be ringing. We're not gonna have any interruptions. We thought we'd go through the manual step-by-step -step to see what we were doing wrong because our first welds were really bad. So check that out. We were doing something completely wrong. So we went from this today to where we are actually producing really nice, beautiful welds on this 5000 series aluminum. That's a T-joint, double welded. We tried breaking one. We took a hammer to it. We beat it like five times before it finally broke. But what it did is it broke the layer of where everything was welded because there's 100% penetration from both sides. So we'll show that to you too. But um, the IPG Photonics Light Weld XR is going to be a really great match for us. And we're here to share with you the different things that we've done to get this quality of weld just after our initial equipment setup. So what we found was it comes with several different tips, right? This tip here is meant for, you look at our list here, it could be used for a butt joint. It could be used for a lap joint. And that's what we were trying to do with the lap joint there. But what I found is like when I'm doing a lap joint is that it's off to one side and so it kind of pushed the wire off to one side and that wire wasn't directly in the middle of the tip for the laser to be going over it. So we went ahead and switched up to do this other tip here. And this other tip is really nice because it has a really small groove there and as you're putting pressure down, it just holds the wire in that groove exactly where we wanted it for our weld. So this is the one that we did at Fabtech. This is the one that got me hooked on this technology. And so now we are, where's our other piece? doing something very close to that. And that's just a few hours worth of setup and uh, watching a few videos. IPG has been very good about sending us all kinds of videos for our setup. They um, were gonna send a technician out and I'm like, let's just review everything that we've done so far and try to get it set up and welding ourselves. So that's what we've done, Joe. Okay, so IPG has a cheat sheet or a setup sheet for each kind of welding that you're doing. So it's labeled wire welding and we came down here to our 5000 series aluminum and we follow the chart over until we get to 120, which is 11 gauge, which we're 1 8 inch that we were welding. So it says it has preset parameters. Uh, the program is F2 and it wants a thousand watts. So we scrolled through here and we got to F2 and F2 was only giving us 700 watts. So we just turned it up to a thousand. Bam, 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 okay. And then um, we can change the wobble length right the wobble length is going to be the width of our weld it will shrink or expand the laser depth and then you can change the wobble frequency it goes from anywhere from zero to like five uh 50 on this and that allows you this controls how fast you can go so if you're going to go be going slow you know you set it low if you want to go as fast as you can then you set it up higher and it'll allow you to travel faster so we put ours at like two two point five or three uh, when we were doing that lap joint and that seemed to work good and i think that, that we had just the wobble frequency set at zero whatever it was for this setting okay. so one of the other i think we had two other problems for our initial setup was some of the settings on the wire feeder so i got went ahead and got into the um manual here and um it tells you all about the different things you have your wire speed you have a feed delay uh, you have a withdraw in a withdraw so you can control how many seconds arc delay so I didn't really know what any of those were. Two of the settings were at a parameter number of two when in the book it says they need to be at zero. So I switched those around and that's when we started actually getting some nice looking welds. So um, always make sure to go back to your, your manuals. Uh, we get pretty busy during the day with a lot, of a lot of distractions. So it was really nice to have nothing going on to go back and it's like, I know we're missing something simple. Let's go through step by step by step. And if you do step by step by step, it actually works pretty good. So follow instructions. Okay, so when you have your wire and you feed it out and you want to start with a new tip here, you can see the laser light right here is indicating where you want need to trim that wire. So you trim it right on that. So the laser should be right at the point of the wire. And that's where you're going to start welding. So I'm going to finish getting my gloves on. That's the purge button. All right, so we get my glasses on. Shouldn't leave those upside down. All right, get my gloves on. Get my gloves on. All right, so this is a, tr a two trigger system. So you have uh, an initiate trigger here, and then this is the trigger that you pull the weld. 
This thing will not weld unless you have the ground clamp. It's not a ground clamp though. You're welding with photons. It's not a controlled circuit, but this tells the computer that you are on your metal so that you're not just like pulling the trigger and waving it around and having laser danger, you know, getting somebody's eyes hurt or something like that. So when you put this up here, you touch the tip to the workpiece, you pull the first lever, the argon or the shielding gas starts going. It has a green indicator light. And then you pull the second trigger and you're ready to start welding, which we'll do next. Okay, so this is our first demo uh, T-joint weld. And you can see there's a spot right there in the middle that like something happened. What happened is like I was trying to drag really smoothly. The gun got stuck on it for a second or something and then I had to restart. But that's still a very good laser weld here. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and turn it around and just do the other side here. So since you're putting pressure and you're dragging it, you need to have something holding your workpiece down because you'll push your workpiece out of the way. So look here, right here, can you see the, uh, see the red dot? I'm just gonna go ahead and trim my wire right at that red dot and we'll be ready to weld again. So, you can imagine what, what really attracted me to this technology after I used it is that once the machine's properly set up and you have all these beautiful preset settings, you could take somebody and show them, teach them the muscle memory needed, the angle needed, to go ahead and start producing viable welds very quickly when it takes years and years and years of practice to become a proficient TIG welder. So, that was just like, I don't know, was it five seconds worth of welding? And then you have a beautiful, strong weld right there like that. So we're going to be experimenting even more with this. And I know inevitably you don't always have a perfect fit up. So how do we use the laser welding system to do like fill a small hole, you know, between two pieces of metal and then continue running the weld. So we're going to be experimenting and sharing all of that with you soon. So stay tuned.